welcome back to another day, another vlog. It's the Friday Arvo session. It's the last one of the week. Uh, it's been a big week. A fair bit happening. Obviously, last week we had the Canon. We had the announcements this week of the Sony stuff. Um, we've also had some other big jobs happening. Um, we're going to get into it pretty quick. There's a fair bit to cover, so I don't want to go too much. Um, had a great night on the laptop last night. Loving the MacBook 16-inch Pro. It is just smashing the work. I actually I had an unboxing job to do that I wanted to get done. Um, I pretty much went from start to finish in like four, four or five hours, which was just insane um, for me. And that's like to a render. I do want to go back and just have a look. I want to play with some new color techniques for Premiere Pro that I looked at today. So I'm going to suss that out and see if I can't make it. It'll spice it up a little bit. And then I'll just see how I go. And if it looks any better, if not, I'll just leave the render as it is. And I should have another video up for you tonight. I'd say I'll whack it up there. So come up pretty good. Pretty happy with that one. Um, other than that, yeah, pretty good. The computer is just insane. Like just running through, I mean, it's only 1080 uh, on the uh, M50 that I'm running on, but <clears throat> I could not do this on the old computer, on the old 13 inch. There's no way I could do what I did last night on that computer. Full speed. I was just going through, just scrolling on, cutting, paste, cutting, dropping back, cutting, 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 mix. It just went through like it was like 30 minutes and just had to go through and make a heap of cuts to just get out all the crap out of it. And it just bang, just bang, 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 bang. No delay, no nothing. Full steam, no, no glitching when you play. Amazing. So, yeah, I've definitely a worthwhile investment for the channel and for myself, uh, making my life a lot easier. I actually went to bed earlier than what I expected I was going to. I didn't even think I was going to get half what I was going to get done. I was just trying to get it set up and trimmed, edited and trimmed basically, and then I was going to come through and do the colours, sound and all that. Uh, and I did. I was able to achieve all that an hour before I planned, so just insane. And I was expecting to come and do more tonight. Now all I have to do is fiddle around with a thumbnail, and which I've already got done. Well, no, I haven't got that one done. Uh, fiddle around with that, so I'll spend a bit of time on that, and I'm good to go. So, yeah, very, very happy with the computer purchase. It's done really, really well. Now, uh, we're gonna, yeah, we'll get straight into it. There's a fair bit to punch out. I'm going to talk iCast, the... Category awards are out today, so I've got I've printed them out because there's a fair few, so I just want to run through them. Uh, I'm just going to run through each category and then basically just a quick bit of a chat about it and the winner. Um, Cold Weather Technical Apparel Award, uh, that was won by AFCO this year uh, with a Reaper Windproof 3-Layer Soft Shell, basically a hoodie but using their, if you've seen their stuff before with the Reaper mask, so it fits over and you've got the holes there so you can breathe, uh, laser cut holes, So and that's uh, UPF, and this has also got AFCO stone release. I thought actually that was really good, and price not too bad. I think it was about 60 to 70 bucks on their website, and they do have some on their website. So if you're fishing and you want a good, uh, for that early morning, and, and we do get them in the territory, um, if you want to get on there, go check those out on the AFCO website. You may have to ship them through a reship uh, to get them into Australia. But if you, if not, maybe a local dealer might be able to get them in for you. But they are available in the States already and a really nice hoodie. And having that there basically cuts down, A, the wind and also the bugs from getting in. Uh, I know when you're on a boat and you're going full steam in the morning, you do get those morning uh flies and mozzies where we come from from the territory and the uh and the sand flies and all that crap so it's really good to have something like that just cuts it all out and it's all one piece so microfiber um so really good with the temperature as well so nice bit of kit yeti one with their soft and hard coolers the roadie 24 won that for the for the soft and hard cooler category uh fly fishing accessory was a plano synergy uh fray bill floating trout net so basically a little little trout net that just floats in the water must have some flotation in the outer ring 
Um, you can scoop up your fish and then have it sort of sitting there in the net, in the water to give that trout as much chance to be able to release it, get your photo, and then send him back to live another day. So that, I thought actually that was really, really clever. I'm not a fly fisherman, but I thought just that idea of having that floating one while you're standing in the creek, that was pretty genius because you could just tether it up and basically have it just floating next year while you're fishing away so that was pretty cool uh fish best fishing accessory was the american tackle company uh zuka handle system basically a full one piece carbon fiber handle so you can basically if you're a rod builder and you into building your own rods go check this one out uh one piece you can basically put it straight into the butt of your rod blank and you've got your handle ready to go and you're going to have all that feel in that in that handle no grips required basically you're ready to go and the feel would be pretty darn special a lot of companies are now going to that trying to get that blank through and then have that uh, handle as part of the blank or as touching the blank so you can get that feel of that little bites uh, especially on the bass side uh, and it's become sort of prevalent over here in australia too with the barramundi so pretty darn cool uh, electronics electronics was Obviously, I said to you the other day, the show was not what it normally is. Obviously, with COVID affecting the supply chain, uh, obviously, either things have been put off or not released or pushed back or whatever reasons, but the electronics is one of those areas that sort of got hit pretty hard. Uh, for them, normally, that's a really big segment and there's super exciting stuff and crazy stuff out there like the live scopes and all that sort of stuff. This year, uh, all that won it was Hummingbird Coastal Charts, which isn't really that exciting. Um, cutlery, hand plies and tools, line cutters, um, little little tool basically one hand little, little snippers in there and you push on the back and it cuts the line uh, it was on shark tank apparently not a bad pocket size nice and light nice and easy to have on you um, there's a few sort of similar to that uh, in the class but it doesn't look too bad i'll probably put one or two that i think are really nice up on the thumbnail for you to have a look at so you can check out but yeah you can go over to iCast website and check all these out and as well so uh, kids tackle pure fishing uh, Garcia Ike easy cast uh, look Ike's really Mike Ike and is huge in bass fishing in America he does a big program with getting fishing rods out to kids and people who can't afford it and trying to get kids into fishing he supplies them with tackle bags and gear through Abu Garcia and all his sponsors and he does a really good job so i think that's probably a good one they've got a basically their combo i think that they give out to the kids is what's sort of won it so that's pretty cool now terminal tackle there's a good little one if you're into uh, basically worms or i think it's called cinco's um they're basically vmc's come out with a thing called a crossover ring uh, or a parlor uh, and basically the ring will sit over like a ring over your finger uh, it'll sit sit on the bait on the on the rubber plastic bait and then in instead of you having to put your hook through the bait which normally happens or a, a little ru rubber ring or whatever this is sort of like a flat ring like a i guess like me wedding ring here and then in the top of that is an inbuilt little knot with uh holes going that way and that way so you can put the hook through either which way you want to set it up so Obviously, that's a little bit tougher. It's not going to destroy the bait, which means your bait will last longer. Good presentation. It's going to sit and swivel and pivot on that hook bend, so it comes up pretty good. Right, uh, tackle management category. Plano's won that. They're obviously the big boys uh, with their Plano Edge Flex. Uh, basically, the bigger boxes, just a paneling system that you can go through and divide and set up your their edge system a little bit more to suit it how you want, like I guess like a camera bag or all their sort of your normal divider systems. So one of those sort of systems. Ice fishing, the Rapala has brought out a <laughs> pretty smart idea actually. I think um, obviously with ice fishing, the guys are going to have uh, drills to drill through the ice. Um, well, they've brought out a little Strike Master lithium 24 volt uh, powered thing. So basically, like your uh, cordless uh, rattle guns and stuff like that were used. They've got a 24 volt system and just bolts on. You can chuck that in your bag. It's nice and light and easy, battery powered, no petrol, none of that crap. Uh, you can shoot out the ice and just drill it and just recharge it when you can. So I thought that was cool. Uh, freshwater hard lure. That was a Z Man. Uh, 
Chatterbait Jackhammer Stealth Blade. I have seen the Chatterbait Jackhammers before. This Stealth Blade, I think it's just a little bit of a fine tune of that system. Um, not too bad, not mega exciting. Again, it's one of those years, I think. And same with soft, uh, salt water soft lure. Uh, it's basically like a big six inch mullet, um, which there's a fair few on the market. It does, it looks pretty good. And that's from 13 Fishing, uh, the Australian guys. So it does, it's a nice looking lure. Uh, that actually might go really well with the barra. So that one we want to have a look at and possibly in Australia as well. Sorry, I'm going to my notes a fair bit. Fishing line um, was Berkeley Pure Fishing, just a fluoro shield. So obviously some sort of shielding over their fluoro line. Um, again, not too much details. I actually thought that idea with that deep water stuff we talked about the other night was a really good idea changing it out to 100 foot. It seems simple, but just by making that difference makes a lot of people's jobs easier. And if you, for those inexperienced fishermen that are just maybe learning how to fish or their first time out on a charter, uh, being able to get that fish and get addicted to fishing and then start them into the sport is a great step. So I thought that it was actually a bigger leap forward than maybe a little bit of shielding on a fluoro line. Don't get me wrong, it's probably really good and it'll go really well in the States. They, they love their fluoro for their bass fishing, but uh, I guess we're pretty much... I guess, it's, at least in the Territory, it's pretty much braid orientated um, just due to rocks and, and logs and all that sort of stuff. So probably not as much. Now, there was a freshwater soft lure, which I thought was actually really cool. We did talk about that. Uh, they, the saltwater one was that Orca SP that I, I did talk about the other night. But I'm not sure if you can see that soft, soft lure up the top there. And basically, it's like a shad on a hook. A uh, little four inch shad or something, but it's got spinner blades at the front. So it's something I think you could probably easily set up yourself. A um, little bit of uh, tackle the fun on a Saturday night and just sit down with a few beers and work it out. But basically all they put is two, two little props, one at the front, one on the rear. Got a four inch going on a big hook, a weighted hook coming down and then a prop at the front, prop at the back, and then that's it. And that's it just, just to make a bit of a splash and obviously still use it and fish it through the weeds and all the stuff like you would like a normal uh, soft plastic. But, yeah, just a little bit better presentation, I guess. So that did look pretty good. Fly fishing, uh, pure fishing, again, I haven't actually heard of them, but that's they own Berkeley, so I'm assuming that's just a bigger company. Um, but the Hardy Zane Pro, I actually haven't heard that again. I'm not a big fly fishing person, my apologies. But uh, the Hardy Zane Pro won that one. Sorry, I know this is a busy day. So now, as per normal, with the rods, freshwater and saltwater, I think every year I've watched it, St. Croix win. Uh, they must do an amazing rod. I have I think I've seen, I looked at a couple. Uh, they're really well made when I was in Bass Pro in the States. Um, really well made rod. Um, and they obviously are very consistent because uh, the Mojo Inshore, I think, won last year for the uh, salt water. And they've the freshwater one is the Legend Extreme spinning rod. Uh, I've looked at those Legend Extreme. I looked at the bait cast and thought about buying one. I think last year, it's a beautiful rod. I'm not sure how it'd go with the barra, but uh, if you're maybe even into something a bit lighter or the bass or the brim, uh, I'd definitely look at St. Croix. They obviously do a great product and uh, just consistent every every year winning uh, at this level with the competition. We've gone up against Loomis and Shimano and all the other fantastic rod makers out there. Uh, that's pretty special to be consistently winning best on show, so very cool. Um, best rod and reel combo was Ab and Abo Garcia with a virtual casting combo. I've, it looks like it's just sort of a basic setup, nothing too exciting there. Fly reel, pure fishing. Again, pure fishing must be a big group, and I think it's a conglomerate because they own Abu Garcia, Penn, uh, and Berkeley as well. So I'm assuming that's just the one big main group. They also must own a Hardy Ultra Disc UDLA reels because that's one best fly reel. Again, can't really tell you too much about it, but it does look too bad. The Shimano won the best freshwater wheel with that Vanford. I did talk about the other night, so you would have already seen that one. And the best saltwater reel is another egg beater, a pen. 
Battle Three uh, reel, and yeah, that's that's a pretty big thing. I haven't seen Pens, a well-known brand, uh, not really doesn't get the exposure or get the I guess gusto or they've done amazing things. Great to see them bounce back here to get a win like that in Best of Show uh, for Salt Water. I think they've do- I must have done something right. I'll have to have a bit more of a look tomorrow and just read up on that reel and see what it's all about. But it looks pretty cool. Um, good on them. Uh, yeah, well known for a long time and obviously may have died off in the last five, ten years, I guess. But uh, definitely go check that out. Um, Twitter, Twitter hack, monster hack on Twitter. Somehow someone's some hackers got into the admin uh, controls of Twitter and basically got all these famous people, including Mr. Beast, uh, Obama, Bill Gates, heap of other billionaires, the New York Stock Exchange, and did a crypto hack uh, saying basically, if you will double your money, you give us send us Bitcoin and we'll double it back. And well, he, you can't blame him. In his 24 hours, I think that he got away with it, he scored $110,000 worth or US dollars in uh, Bitcoin. So, well, good on him. What can you say about that? Pretty funky. Uh, Sony's big release now, the A7R3. A7 no, not the A7R, A7S3. The new one to replace the two. Uh, we knew it was coming. We knew it was end of July. Well, that got announced all across social media on Sony. Um, 28th of July, that is going to be the big release. I'm not sure if they're releasing anything else with that camera or if it's just going to be for that camera. You never know. They've been sort of pretty much underdog in it a little bit. This We've, we've heard a few of the rumoured specs. We don't know how close that is to the mark. They've come out pretty late to the mark. They kept their cards to themselves until Canon released their stuff and then it sort of suddenly there was leaks everywhere and it's all happening and, well, now it's coming. So that's going to be on the 28th and that's going to be, I'll try and give some times here, UTC time zone is going to be 1400. PDT is 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, 2300 on the JST JST, sorry, my apologies. And then in Perth time, it's 10 p.m., so it's going to be like uh, about midnight for the east coast of Australia. Oh, excuse me for that. So if you've been waiting to see about that one, that's going to be a pretty good one. I'll probably be able to check that. That's going to be on YouTube, the release, so everyone can watch it. So that's awesome. Good work, Sony, on that. Um, So, yeah, I guess we'll find out. That's not far away. That's less than a week or a week and a half away, so pretty exciting. Um, X of Vivo, which is a new sort of a new phone company, come out. Uh, Unbox Therapy had one of theirs today. Pretty cool little camera. I'll just run through the specs and then we'll talk about the big thing that makes it special. X50 phone. Uh, it's got four cameras, five gigabyte. Oh, sorry, five G. Oh, sorry, five G. Yep. 8 gigabytes, 128 gigabyte memory, or 256 gig. It's a 90 hertz display, so definitely sort of up there with the quality. 33 watt fast charger. It's got a 765 Snapdragon in it, so a good chip. Uh, the cameras are 16 mil to 135 with an aperture of 1.6 to 3.4. Um, yeah, mid, and they're pricing it as a mid-range phone, but there's no prices. I did go and have a look, and I couldn't find any prices anywhere for it. So you'll have to sort of stay tuned and keep an eye out. I don't think it's going to be too long before they do a release. This was pretty early on. He's got the first one. Now, the big thing with this and the boys, uh, Lou and the boys at Unbox, were tested it, and we got a good look at it, was the main camera has a built-in mechanical gimbal in the phone. Yes, that's what I thought. Not a, It's not electronically stabilized like your GoPro, like your uh, iPhone, like your Samsung. Mechanical gimbal built into the phone. The camera bump does come out a little bit further than, say, an iPhone or a Samsung, but having that mechanical gimbal, the boys had it on, did some video, really, really good. There was, when he was moving reasonably fast through the room, there was a little bit of, pulsing and stuff um so i guess the trick will be moving sort of steady and smooth with it but 
<laughs> he went up the stairs with this with the one of their Sony cameras going side by side, and the Sony was all over the shop, and this thing was silky, silky smooth. So the brilliant idea, really well done. This is going to be in a mid range camera, so you're probably looking at the seven eight hundred dollars in Australia compared to say a fifteen hundred dollar iPhone. So if you're a, a little bit of a filmmaker and you use your i your current phone. I definitely go out and check this out. It's called Vivo. Uh, definitely one to watch. And I would imagine if this succeeds reasonably well, you'll see that mechanical gimbal start coming into the other phones because that is the easiest, I guess. And it doesn't sound like it's too expensive because they've got all these other top notch features in there as well. But uh, yeah, really, really cool. And that will make a big difference to the uh, cameras. Instead of having to try and digitally crop in, losing a getting a crop and digitally doing it, this thing can basically no crop and just run around and throw your handheld gimbal in the bin. Or yeah, so very very cool, big uh, big news I thought for that one. Now the boys at DP uh, Review got that uh, one of their new R6, a, a proper camera for review. They went out, they got shots. They did everything. Now, the shots look really, really good. Uh, he did a couple, I don't think, uh, a quarter of a second of some water flowing just on a stream. Um, looked really good. Stability-wise, really good. They used the R5 pre-production, so not a production model. The R6 was a production model. R5 was pre-production to video the whole shoot, and that like it come up really well. The video of the actual video, I think a lot more people were watching that compared to actually looking at the R6 review. But that look, the R6 did really well. Uh, he did say he recorded 4K 24 frames a second for nearly an hour, no overheating, no issues with the R6, and the picture was really, really good. Um, he did have it on 4K 60 and recorded and at the 29 minute mark it shut down and had to cool for five minutes but 29 minutes filming straight that's pretty good for 4K 60 uh wow that's like that's you can't knock that at all I don't think um so that was very very cool now the only thing they didn't have I would have liked to seen is maybe a little bit more astro I did chuck a note in there and ask him if they could maybe get some astro shots or some nightscape shots just to see that low light performance and what it's like and maybe some of the moon and if they could handheld shoot the moon with a long lens i think he the quarter of a second one was with a hundred mil camera or 100 sorry 100 mil lens uh so he was using all rf lenses too so like good quality they've all got the inbuilt stabilization but yeah, look, look, the camera looked really good and I think he was pretty impressed with it. Uh, there wasn't too much he complained about. Uh, everything sort of we hope that you'd hope for was pretty much their stability and all that sort of stuff and the color science and everything else like that and the 10-bit. So that was pretty cool. Now, the big news and the huge news, and it was wild because there's an Aussie company that did it. Uh, everyone's been talking about R5 and 8K. Well, Blackmagic released... Basically, I think last night, uh, it was all over Twitter when I woke up this morning, four in the morning, and I checked it out today. Blackmagic has come out with the Ursa Mini Pro 12K video camera. That's correct, 12K. Holy bundy. It's got an 80 megapixel sensor. It's a Super 35 format, uh, 60 frames a second at 12K, 110 frames at 8K, 220 frames a second at 4K Super 16. It's got a PL mount, but you get 350 bucks Australian. You get the adapter to go to EF or pretty much whatever other lens you want, lens mount you want. They had them all there. They've got the prices on the website. It was 20 grand with the adapter to go to EF for the 12K camera. There's a there's a downplayed budget model, which is a 4.6K video camera, and that's 12 grand. Uh, it's got dual C fast cards and an SD card. It's got a USB C expansion port. It's using the BMB Black Magic codec. You can edit the footage, the 12K footage, on a laptop. So on my MacBook, I would be able to get 12K footage, put it on there, and it basically you can take it down to 8K or 4K. I think that's basically 
that's what you're doing. What the, from what I read, they they film it at 12k, and then you put it into the, the format that comes in the Kodak, and basically you just compress it down to 8k or 4k, whatever you want. But obviously, you can do so much with that. You can crop in, crop out. So 12k, you're cropping in at 8k. You can crop in it down to tiny to your face, and it's still 4k. So the options you have there are pretty darn insane. Uh, Built-in uh, ND filters as well. Uh, wild bit of kit. This is going to be big news. I can imagine either tonight you'll see a ton of videos about it. Um, I can all weekend. I think they're going to be talking about this one. I think it's awesome that Blackmagic Australian guys have done it. That's just friggin' insane. Uh, 12K. We just talked about a camera you can do 8K. Yeah, it's a video camera. Yeah, it's 20 grand. But I don't think – I'm pretty sure this is the world's first portable, like, 12K camera like that you can go out and shoot with. So pretty, pretty darn cool. Uh, yeah, great job to Blackmagic. That is a wild bit of kit. I'd love to see it. Uh, maybe if I win the Tats Lotto, I can get chuck a 12K camera here and film in my room <laughs> while, while I'm still working. That would be pretty funny. Uh, then you'd see – you know, I'll probably be really ugly at 12K, so I'll pass. I like it rough. Get it. That's why you use those vintage lenses. <laughs> Rightio, and that's it. Huge, huge day. Hope I haven't bored you too much. 26 minutes. We've got to go before this cuts out. Uh, have a great weekend. I'll see you all again Monday. Oh, don't forget, there should be a video coming up either tonight or tomorrow morning. See how I go playing with it tonight. Uh, and I'll see you all soon. Rightio, whether you're coming this way or that way, I'll catch you tomorrow. No, Monday. Let's try Monday. Righto. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Have a glass of red for me. Ciao. Peace.